and welcome to another Messy Church to Science at Home with me, Dr. Dave. I hope you've been enjoying the science experiments we've done so far and today we've got a very special Easter science experiment involving eggs. I, but before we begin, I want to introduce you to a special friend and guest who's with me today. I'll just go and get her. Here we go. This is our special friend and guest today. This is uh, Killy, the uh, Kiwi, the Messy Church Kiwi, all the way from New Zealand. Uh, Killy came back to the UK with me uh, just over a month ago when I was travelling over there to uh, teach Messy Church of Science to the New Zealand Messy Churches on North Island in Rotorua and on South Island in Christchurch. And uh, Killy uh, just wants to say hello to the Messy Church Kiwis over in New Zealand. Uh, Oscar and Ollie and also her friend Olivia who's uh, now living in Australia. So uh, say hello Killy. There we go and uh, Killy's going to be around as we do this experiment today so watch out for her. I'm sure she's got very good eyesight because they come out at night Kiwi birds so I'm sure she's got very good eyesight which is going to help her do the observations in this experiment. Now for this experiment you will need two eggs. Egg one and egg two. And one of them needs to be hard boiled, but you shouldn't know which one it is because we're going to try and find out which one is hard boiled. So let's get on with the experiment extraordinary. So for this experiment, you'll need two eggs, one of them which is hard boiled, the other one that's raw, and you need to write on them the numbers one and two so you can determine and keep an eye on which egg is which. You'll need some kitchen scales, doesn't matter if they measure in ounces or grams, and you'll need a bowl of water. And this experiment is based upon the experiment in Messy Church of Science on page 247. So how are we going to tell if one of these eggs is raw and one of them is hard boiled? Well, maybe we could look at them to see if they seem any different. Can you spot any differences in the eggs? Do they look the same size? Do they look the same color? Are they the same shape? Well, you can't really tell much looking at the colour and the shape of the egg because it depends on what's on the inside and we can't see through the shell to the inside. So maybe we'll try a different way. Maybe we'll try and weigh them on the scales. So first of all, we'll take egg number one and we'll put it on the scales and we'll see how heavy it weighs. The scales are saying it's 66 to 67 grams. So let's say 67, 66 and a half grams. So we'll take egg number one off and put it back on its stand. And now we'll take egg number two and we'll put it on the scales again. And we'll see how heavy that one weighs. Well, this one weighs between 69 and 70 grams. So maybe we'll say 69 and a half. So egg number two is how many grams heavier? One is 66 and a half and the other is 69 and a half. So it's three grams heavier. But does that really tell us anything about whether the eggs are hard boiled or still raw. Maybe they were just slightly different in size before one of them was boiled. So we really don't know by weighing them which one is still raw and which one has been hard boiled. Perhaps we'll try a different test to see if that can tell us anything about them. So first of all, we're going to take egg number one and we're going to place egg number one in the water. Well, first of all, what do you notice that the egg is doing? Did the egg sink or did the egg float? 
It certainly wants to roll, but it sinks and it lies on its side. And now we'll take egg number two and we'll put that one in the water as well. Well, that behaves a little bit differently, doesn't it? It's not lying on its side. It's sitting there with its large round end pointing up towards the surface of the water. Maybe that tells us something about whether which one is hard boiled and which one is raw. Why do you think they're floating differently? For our final test, we're going to take our egg Put it on the work surface and give it a spin. Well, egg number one spins really well. So let's try and see what happens if I can try and stop it with my finger. If I stop it with my finger, even though it was spinning very quickly, egg number one stops spinning. Let's see what happens with egg number two. Well, it won't spin as easily as egg number one. And when I stop it, it keeps on spinning. It keeps on spinning. So there we have a difference between egg number one and egg number two. One spins easily and will stop spinning when I touch it. Whereas egg number two won't spin as easily and then continues to spin once I stop it. Maybe that tells us something about which egg is hard boiled and which egg is soft boiled. So at the end of our testing, let's find out which of these eggs is hard boiled and which is then is raw. So we'll take egg number one and I'll try and break it into this glass. Oh, well, egg number one is the egg that was hard boiled. That was the egg that sank to the bottom of the water that could easily spin but stopped when I touched it. So that egg is hard boiled. And egg number two, shall we see if it's raw? There we go. Egg number two was the raw egg. That was the egg that sat on its bottom in the water. And although it was harder to spin, when I stopped spinning it, it went round and round and round. Have a think why the fact that one is hard boiled and the other is raw makes a difference to how these eggs behave in the water and when we spin them on the work surface. eggs at Easter to remind us of the life that God wants to give us in Jesus. Jesus came to give life and life to the full, a life full of energy, a life full of God's love. But some people didn't want God's life. They decided they just liked life as it was. And so they decided they'd stop Jesus. And on Good Friday, they took Jesus and put him on a cross and lifted him up high and he died. But they should have known that you can't stop God's full and loving life. 
it goes on and on and on. Because after Jesus had been in the tomb for three days, God brought him back to life again. For nothing can stop God's life. Maybe you think that life's not as full as it used to be. Maybe there are things in your life which have stopped. Maybe there are things in your life which you have made stop because you haven't been loving and you haven't been living life God the way God wanted you to. So we say, God, we are sorry. We're sorry when we stop your life and when we stop your life in others. Please forgive us and help us to have your life, life which never stops, life which can never be stopped, life which keeps on going because you raised Jesus from the dead at Easter time. And we thank you and ask that you would give us your new life this Easter and every Easter. A life that keeps on going on and on. Thank you. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that extraordinary experiment, our special experiment for Easter. And it's reminded you that what Easter's about, that even though things seem to come to an end, God's life never ends and keeps going on. And that's the life we can trust in because he sent Jesus to be with us and he raised Jesus from the dead. I hope you've ex enjoyed exploring this experiment with our eggs today and uh, from myself and from Killy, we just want to say goodbye to you today and uh, we hope you'll come back and join us again soon for some more experimenting with Messy Church of Science at home, exploring the wonder of creation and the wonder of the Creator. <laughs>